In this video, we're going to show you how to write back from a Power BI report back to the database to correct issues that you might have in your reports. So stay tuned. So have you ever wanted to look at a Power BI report and see some issues that you might have in that report and be able to write back using some kind of application? Well, that's what this video is all about. So let's start by looking at some bad data that we might have in our report. So to start with, you're noticing here that up top that we have a few sales reps that look different than the others. In other words, we have uh, Timmy here in this case with an outstanding uh, sales quota of $2 million, while the other reps have a more modest sales quota. We can see the same thing over here in this report that obviously our report data is wrong. We have some bad data. So our goal is to fix that with a Power App system. So let's start by creating a Power App. So to do that, Power Apps is going to integrate into Power BI through Custom Visual. Now this Custom Visual right now is a preview feature uh, visual, but it has been out for a long time. It's very, very stable. It has uh, some issues with the alignment occasionally, but all in all, uh, I've been using it in production for a long, long time and it works great. Now, uh, to do this, you'll find this in the gallery up top here. We'll go ahead and select uh, Import from Marketplace. You'll then search for Power Apps. All right. Once you find that Power App, go ahead and simply uh, select it by hitting the Add button. That's going to add it and make it available to you. Then go ahead and click on that. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of skinny this down a little bit here and make it a little bit uh, less wide than it would be. And this is where you'll get a little bit of preview feature kind of quirkiness sometimes is how wide it, it treats the application. So once you have it the size you want, go ahead and check the columns that you want passed into the application. Now, a few of the things that are unusual in this. First of all, you'll notice that I have Choose App and Create New App. Now, based on where you're at, if you're in the uh, Power BI desktop, you may not see that second option of creating a new application, at least at the time of this recording. It's only available in the PowerBI.com environment, the service environment. If you are on the desktop, you can choose an existing application. However, you cannot create a new application. The benefit of creating new applications, though, is the cross filters all work. So for example, if you were looking at the option that you see up top here, this this, this kind of um, uh, bar chart over here, and you wanted to go ahead and, and pass something in to the application, as you select Jimmy, the application will also filter down to only Jimmy's uh, items in the gallery also. So pretty handy there. So let's go ahead and try that now. Let's go ahead and create a brand new application. This is gonna open up the Power Apps environment. Once we do that, it's going to create a very, very simple application. Now, this application isn't going to do a whole lot. Uh, what we're going to have to do is basically specify what we want to do. In our case, we want to be able to, uh, be able to update their quotas based on what rep is selected. So it's a really simple application for us to fix in this case. So we have our, our reps that we're seeing right here. And we'll go ahead and, and create a little two-zone application. On the bottom is going to be our form, and on the top, is going to be our gallery. So I'm going to go ahead and rename the gallery, which basically shows us a, a record per employee. So I'll call that just GAL uh, Browse Employees. There we go. And then I'm going to create a form below it. Now we'll do that by going to Insert and Forms and Edit Form. So it's going to drop this in for us. Let me go ahead and push this down below. We'll then go ahead and specify a data source. Now, in our case, I already have this data source created, and you'll see it uh, right here. It's called Time Card uh, right there. Uh, but if you didn't, you can just hit the Add New Data Source, point to your database, and then you're off to the races. I'm going to point to my quota system that I have right here. Hit Connect. And then we'll specify which fields inside that we want to use also. So let's go ahead and select that. You'll see Edit Fields on the right. Now, this is a new UI that just added, uh, just released a couple days ago. We'll just go ahead and check these two columns right here that we want. And that's going to, and then we have a new UI that kind of shows us what kind of, what kind of values we're going to put in each one. Is it currency? Is it a text field? Is it a drop down box or whatever? Okay. So our case looks pretty darn good. Let's go ahead and make sure it looks like a two zone application by kind of color coding the bottom parts, but it looks a little bit different than the top part. All right. With that now done, we want to make sure we can select the top part and have that value passed down to the bottom form application. So when I, in other words, when I select Timmy, I'm going to hold on the Alt key and select Timmy. We want to make sure we see Timmy's numbers down below. So to do that really simply, we're going to, we have a data source of a quota. 
we want to point to an item in that table to put at the bottom. So to do that, really simple. We can go ahead and specify uh, gallery browse employees dot selected. And there we go. Now we're seeing uh, Timmy's numbers. So again, to make sure I look at that code one more time, it's whatever gallery name you have dot selected is the item is going to pull from the top to the bottom. And let's give this form one a better name also. The only reason I'm doing that is so it'll, the code will make sense a little bit later. So I'll call this edit quota. All right. So our second step now is to drop that uh, 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 submit button in, on the bottom. When we submit button, it's going to send it right back to the database and right back to the quota database, whatever Timmy's new number is going to be. So to do that, we'll either put a button down there or an icon. Either way, it doesn't really matter to us. We'll pop that in down here. We'll call that just uh, uh, save quota. Once we have that now done, when I select this, right now it has false, meaning that button doesn't do anything at all. What we can do is we can type in submit form, which we'll go ahead and submit the form. Which form do you want to submit? Well, we only have one right now called form uh, edit quota. There we go. And close parenthesis. Now that we've done that, we are set, ready to run, run, uh, go ahead and ready to run this now. So we can run this by either hitting the play button. We can hold down the alt key and click set, save quota. You see it all appears to be working here, even though I'm sending the same number back essentially at this point. So let's go ahead and save this application. We'll call this just, uh, Power Platform Pros Demo 2. Okay. Let's go ahead and give it a better, uh, go ahead and save that. Now, of course, we have to publish this out so other customers can actually see this, but let's go ahead and save this out now. Okay. And after we save this, we'll be able to go over to the, the, the sales quota right here. It's going to load up that application. And once it loads that application up, let's kind of take a peek at what it looks like here. Now, as you look at this application, one of the things you're going to see is the filters all work. So if I were to go back over here again and select Timmy, we'll see I'm only looking at Timmy's records where I can go ahead and make a quick change and change his uh, record to 50,000. Hit save quota. And when I save that quota, you'll notice that it doesn't look right still in the report. However, I can go back over to my database here and refresh this data. And we now see his new quota is $50,000. However, over here, we'll need to do a refresh of this data. Now, there's a few ways you can get around that. One is more like a live data set. We're looking at the data live and streaming it in and your numbers all move live as it happens. The other way though is to do refreshing like I did here, um, where, you know, whether it be a, a, an import data set or a direct query like I'm doing here, uh, both of those will work beautifully in this case. But the data on the database is correct and it'll reflect that in the next refresh of the database. Now, this can be used in a number of ways. For example, in this application, I could have gone through and uh, said, go ahead and text Jim, uh, Dim, Timmy or Jimmy or send him a, 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 a gift or whatever it might be. There, there are hundreds of connectors that are available to you inside of Power Apps. And this gives you access to all of those connectors, uh, things like Twitter, things like, uh, things like uh, creating tickets in Zendesk and uh, uh, Visual Studio, all sorts of goodness you can do, salesforce.com. So all of this can be accessible through Power, through Power BI and Power Apps because of that. It also works with Flow as well, by the way. So I hope you enjoyed episode two of our series on Power Platform Pros. If you want to subscribe to this, please make sure you either text a number down below in the description or hit the subscribe button inside of YouTube as well. Uh, you want to, when you text uh, us, use a keyword of power platform to text that number as well, by the way. Have a great day and thanks for watching this video on how to do write backs to Power BI from Power Apps. Have a great day.